Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones. Mm. And what we're going to be looking at in this episode is how to deal with ruptures in the therapy process. What number are we up to, Jackie? You always tell me usually. 176. Oh, I just like to have you to tell me because it not only gives me a sense of security, stability, continuity, and predictability. What's that word? Predictability. Predictability. I love to do all that for you, Bob. (laughs) But it also, I think, oh, that's really well done. So ruptures. This is a very important. So the exact title. I said, say it again, will you? How to deal with ruptures in the therapy process. Okay. So this is. Of course, the first step is that we need to be aware that they're going to (laughs) happen. Yeah. Well, this is a spoiler alert. A spoiler okay. alert, love spoiler it. Spoiler alert, yeah. Uh, and, and if you like reality TV programs, there's many of spoiler alerts for, say, the ne- next episode of The Traitors or the next episode of X. So this is a spoiler alert and a, a self-evident one, really, that if you're going to be a professional psychotherapist, by definition, you will have ruptures in the psychotherapy process. That is just taken as red as like the sun comes up and the sun goes down. Yeah. There will always be ruptures. And even more, there has to be. Does it mean that you're doing a good job if you've got ruptures? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you don't have ruptures in the psychotherapy room, then you're heading towards the world of perfect psychotherapy, being a perfect therapist, of course, those therapists don't exist. No. It's how you handle those ruptures. So what would you class as a rupture? Well, let's just, uh, let me just carry on. Clients, consciously but more, more unconsciously, will always be testing their therapists. Yes. To see if they can trust them and feel safe with them. Yes. By definition. Yes. I okay. was only talking about this this week with a couple that I was working with. Oh, right. Yeah, interestingly. And I was quoting the book about games people play and the traps that we lay and all those sorts of things and how we can do that in relationships. Well, that we do do that in relationships, yeah. Yeah, because if you think about it, how do we, unless we do that, whether usually unconsciously, by the way, how, how do we know whether the other person can be trusted? Yeah, absolutely. So that's part of the games, the behavioral repetitive patterns, the defense systems. They're all parts really all these traps, if you want to call them, they're all parts of the client working out whether the therapist walks the talk and can be trusted. Yeah. So and sometimes going, we mess up and sometimes I think we, will we will fall yeah. into the traps. And we have to. Yeah. We have to because, you know, in the, in the process of uh, what I, we're just talking about, setting traps and everything else, so that the client can feel safe and can feel secure and can trust the therapist, they the, they will often set the therapist. And I don't mean this is in a conscious way particularly, but they will set the therapist up to fail. Yeah, I think that's the difficulty a lot of my clients have when we have this conversation is they think of the general playing games in relationships, as in it's a conscious thing that you do. And it's trying to allow them to understand that this is not a conscious thing that we do. This is a a subconscious. Okay, I'll help you along the line then. There's a a word called manipulation. Yes, yes. Manipulation for me, I'm not talking about the psychoanalytical version of manipulation is a conscious process. Yeah. That is a different process altogether. Absolutely. So from what I'm talking here, which happens outside their awareness, usually to confirm their script in TA terms or how they see the life and whether the person that they are sharing their vulnerable self with or going to is safe and secure. Yeah. 
yeah and it, it, it's like the, the seen and heard as well do you know what i mean it, it it's it involves an awful lot of mm. things yeah. yeah how many times have you heard your clients say and i've heard many 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 times when i've made a mistake we'll call ruptures if you like the client then says oh well if you own the mistake and deal it the way i'm going to talk about it often the client will say well at least you're human yes yeah yeah and for the client to understand that the person in front of them is human like them and can own up and take ownership yes the mistake or the rupture in the process yeah and, and link it into the history for the client as well as their own history maybe is an amazing bonding procedure usually in the therapy process yes if you get to that point if the client doesn't disappear in the meantime <laughs> or the client sorry or the therapist defends against their narcissistic ego yes yeah <laughs> in other words i don't make mistakes i've read ta today i've read games people play i've spent seven years being a psychotherapist how can i make mistakes you know if the therapist is defending against that like type of narcissism or inflated ego then problems will happen yeah i think that's why inquiry is so important so that we do check in that we are on the right path we're not making assumptions and yeah i think the therapist that loses sight of their own vulnerabilities and their own level of humanity it won't help in their relationship with clients no because if there is a mistake by the therapist if i'm going to use the word mistake yeah, yeah. and the therapist doesn't take ownership and apologize and they don't look at the rupture and how come it has happened in the first place from either therapist perspective or the clients then how can the client ever trust the human encounter with the therapist yeah because it it's is like, yeah it's like saying you're never developmental when people uh talk about their parents for example you know kids i'm talking about here yeah well all of us i'm I, I, I as a parent if parents don't take ownership of there's no such thing as a perfect parent mm. then parenting becomes much more difficult yeah and what is it about Child these parents that we don't like to be seen to get things wrong <laughs> when no, we are only human that's right and if therapists can understand that this is not about being right all the time this isn't about being perfect all this time this isn't about rescuing the client all the time most of what happens in the therapy client relationship actually is about two humans meeting sharing their vulnerabilities yeah Action. there is no other relationship like it is there really no no and it's it's a very special relationship yeah so it is really important that the client is able sorry the therapist is able to take responsibility and ownership of mistakes that's number one but you said something very important right at the beginning when you said oh well, the first step or i think you said the first of it is the person's aware that they've made the mistakes <laughs> yeah that's the bit yeah but it, it means the therapist needs to think developmentally they need to think about you know the clinical contract they need to think about their part in the process to be even be aware in the first place that there's a rupture yeah now how next question is how do you know ruptures happened for me it's that disconnect yes precisely. Clients. yeah and it's and it's usually when you feel some sort of disconnection yeah either you either you've disconnected to protect yeah. yourself or they've disconnected by withdrawing going silent yeah. 
being angry, whatever we want to say. And it is amazing when a client does that disconnect and shut down. It's for me, it's been unmissable. Do you know what I mean? Halfway through a conversation. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they with but the normal one is they'll withdraw. Yeah. And shut down like you just said. Yeah. Now the therapist needs to think about what has happened here between the two of us in the process where which has resulted in disconnection. Never takes you know, like we say in couples therapy, it always takes two to tango yeah yeah and in that moment for me i'm really conscious of not i want to say not shaming the client like they've done something wrong by doing that disconnect Mm -hmm. that's right well it's a good way to put it because if the therapist is always thinking about pathology and always thinking that it is the client acting out some pathological position They aren't coming from a place of co-creation. They're coming from a place of seeing, not really seeing the client at all, actually, just simply seeing the pathology. Yeah. It's true. It's a co-created relationship where both people need to think about what parts they have played in the process. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it goes to a one-up, one-down position, usually. Yeah. Where the therapist sees the other person acting out pathologically, stuck in a certain type of behavior, thinking it through in some sort of clinical way where they don't actually see the person in front of them. And they certainly aren't thinking, unfortunately, about maybe what is their own reactive countertransference. Yes. That may have caused this rupture. Yeah. Yeah. And they were ego getting in the way as well, that I couldn't possibly have got it wrong or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, that's what I, I mean. About about taking kind of, responsibility yeah. or our part in it. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what I mean about analyzing their own counter transfers. Now, if they aren't able to do it in the therapy room, they need to go to supervision and say, I want to talk about the process of the client because I feel, you know, there's been a disconnection. I would advise anyone listening to podcast to start with analyzing their own counter transfers. Yeah. I would because often it's there. Yes, yeah, yeah. And sometimes ruptures can happen because us as the therapist, we're not playing the game with the client. We're not doing the role that we're supposed to do or we're expected to do. And it's a different sort of a relationship for them. That's why inquiry is very important. Like yeah. You know, and taking clients to supervision. Now, if you then, through analysis of your own counter transference, realize that you've been reacting to the client in a way which has its origin in your own counter transference, then you need to bring that up with the client and take ownership. And learn from them, learn from the mistakes. Yes. You learn from the, the process. Yeah. If you're always going to put that disconnection on the shoulders of the client, then things will go wrong. Or more ruptures will happen. Yes. Yeah. Or break down about... the relationship ruptures that happen in the therapy room when we've not done what the client wants us to for the best of intentions if that makes sense yeah so so let's so if you're brought up in a in a parenting situation where anger anger is culture is you know part of the culture of the family or you know, being stoic and withdrawing is part of the culture of the family. And you've made decisions about how to be and not to be in the world, and you expect other people to be the same way. If your therapist starts to be, you know, comes from a different type of script, 
then you are correct. That's where the client may disconnect because you aren't playing the other part of the in the script. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So that that that's that's could well happen. That that's where the therapist, because they're paid to do this, they've used to have five or six years training to talking about all this lot. Um will understand there's a disconnection and needs to start thinking what's the process and they need to start thinking developmentally actually they need to start thinking what's being reenacted by, by both of us in this process which has led to this yeah and then through inquiry we might to get to a place of reparative work but both of us can take ownership of the process. Yeah. And that to me is the 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 therapeutic part of it is the the rebuilding of the relationship after the rupture and moving forward with it, which a lot of clients I would imagine have not been through that process before. Mm -hmm. That you know, a rupture happens and then it, that's the end and you never rebuild it. The relationship is never the same again, it's broken. That's right. And sometimes clients leave. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They have because for lots of lots of reasons that the post hasn't been dealt with, that um inquiry hasn't effective inquiry hasn't happened, or supervision hasn't been effective, lots of things. Yeah. And so the client might not come back, or they might say, Oh, well, I expected this if all all people are the same, really. Um, and go off again and and that confirms their script yeah. and the is, is left oh what what on earth happened there or might be yeah yeah mm, so sometimes they don't come back they stay if you can if you can if you make sure that you deal with the process yeah and the psychological I mean, when I say process, I mean the, I mean the psychological unconscious process is often being played out between the two of you. Then, then, the, uh, then you usually can get to an understanding of what it's all about. Yeah. Have you ever had a client that there's been a rupture, and because they pay money, they think that you should behave and be a certain way but it's not in their best interest to do that yes does that make sense they don't Maybe like I'm, it when you yeah people paying 50 60 70 pounds an hour whatever it is for therapeutic services i think they have an entitlement if you like no that's not the word but they have you know a... an expectation of you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 that might be unreasonable or not but with money being involved, it, it almost gives another level of expectation. Yes, so absolutely, uh, I have uh, got got where uh, people have clients have said, well, actually, you know, X X and X, and may or may not come back again. Yeah, I mean, in my early, early, early before I started thinking about ruptures and disconnections and all these things that we're talking about here, I remember one client. I did a parent interview with from a uh, parent interview is a technique in, in uh, I think it was about I think I've just done four years of training or something like that. I was with a client and I did this technique parent interview, uh, which comes from transaction analysis where you talk to the internalized parent. What I forgot, or I didn't take credence enough, is that when you do that psychologically, the child part of the person is always listening to the dialogue with the parent yeah right and the client child listening on um was furious oh they didn't tell me at the time by the way they went away and i didn't i didn't pick up on all this in the session that i had they have perceived me being how can I explain this to you on the parent's side yeah 
and not their side. Yes, you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So session ends. I thought we'd done a good piece of work. And then the per the client doesn't come back the next session. Then doesn't come back the next session. And then they come back the third session. And I said, what was wrong? And they said, well, you know, I, you know, that work you did with my parent, you just, you just were on their side. You didn't understand me at all. Because of my early experience, I think, but I was pretty inexperienced. Um, and I didn't understand what we're talking about here at all. I think I pass on being a bit unfair myself, but n we never recovered the rupture. Yeah. And even though the person stayed, they left not long after. Ostensibly for another reason, but it was at that reason. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we never, we never really recovered the connection that we had before that piece of work. So I think. And now I think yeah. that is the danger with some of the deeper therapeutic work that you do do with clients that potentially, you know, by doing the the deeper work, you are opening yourself up to more ruptures and, and disconnects in the relationship. Yeah. And I think the more clinical experience I had and the more time and the more learnings and the more experienced I became, and more understanding what we're talking about here, I was more able to deal with the ruptures and from a co-created place. Yeah. Um, but sometimes people don't come back, and you are and you are right. If you're doing deep developmental reparative work, then you're more likely to come across with ruptures. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes they don't come back. Um, I, I don't know uh, out of 40 odd years how long, how many people didn't come back. I know some haven't. And it's often because of what I'm talking about here. I haven't, we don't do the inquiry and the deeper level and the co-created looking at the relationship and all this sort of stuff. Um, but I think also on the other hand, quite a lot of people have stayed and worked through the mistakes with me. And it's improved the relationship that that to me is the beauty of it when it does happen when you know if, if the client has got a bit of stickability and they're willing to work through it I think what happens on the other side of that there's a mutual respect and it, it's a, a deeper level that relationship the trust usually, is definitely yeah, you're yeah. right usually you can recover from ruptures in the process of what I've just talked about that co yeah. But the other three requisites that needs to be there to help the two people resolve those ruptures is a very good working relationship. You know, the relationship is secure enough to hold the rupture. Yeah. Contain the rupture. So the two people can inquire and look what it's all about. Yeah, if that strong relationship isn't there in a secure, safe way. Then it's a harder road, I think. Yeah, I don't know why, but as you were talking, then I was thinking about that. Is it a Chinese proverb or something to do with a, a broken bowl when it's put back together? Yes, yes. You know what I mean. But yeah. the relationship is different, but it can be stronger moving forward. It's a different and relationship. That's yeah. right, and. If you look at which in you know, Richard Erskine's book, it was a mentor of mine and a well-known psychotherapist and written quite a lot of books on developmental integrative psychotherapy. One of his books, I can't quite remember which one it is, so it doesn't help the pod read, <laughs> it doesn't help the podcast <laughs> the people, but anyway, is uh, there's a vase on the front of the uh, cover of the book of... Uh, of exactly what you're talking about and i think it I goes think on maybe the that's the is it the one about relationships yeah it's about healing yeah i healing can't think i think i've probably got that one yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and he talks about it in the back cover of what the picture means which is what you've just said yeah so it's a uh, it's true and it's very true i've found that many times 
that if you can work through things in a co-created relationship and the relationship is strong enough to hold the containment of the rupture and the examination of the processes and you can own your own counter transference and the plan can look what look at what's been re-enacted in the process then often the relationship is deeper actually and stronger yeah wonderful bob thank you so much i do enjoy these conversations so do i so do i and especially our 175th sixth oh even more 170... <laughs> <laughs> 176th then even so next time it's 177 and what's the title going to be the title of the next one is we all need to develop an internal supervisor for effective psychotherapy that is very very true another interesting one is there a spoiler alert for that one bob spoiler alert no i'm not going to give a spoiler alert. <laughs> that you have the anticipation excitement and curiosity of the discussion of that podcast fair play i can't wait looking forward to it <laughs> okay goodbye until uh, next time bob bye care, yeah bye bye you've been listening to the therapy show behind closed doors podcast we hope you enjoyed the show don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review we'll be back next week with another episode